In 2019, India said, again, in 2023, they achieved their goal. Hello everybody and welcome! It was an exciting week for space fans as we had two landers that wanted to land near the south pole of the moon. First, Russia attempted to do so with their Luna 25 spacecraft. But unfortunately, that mission ended in failure after an orbit adjustment burn was based on faulty parameters, which resulted in the vehicle crashing into the moon instead of soft landing on it. India, on the other hand, had much more success with their Chandrayaan-3 mission. Their space agency ISRO managed to get the Vikram lander safely to the surface on August 23rd at 12.34 UTC and deployed a small rover a few hours later. This was of course celebrated across the nation, but probably nowhere as much as in mission control, where it was all thumbs up and smiling faces. So how did India succeed where Russia failed? Let's look at six differences between the two missions. Which of them made the biggest difference? Let me know in the comments below. Oh. And if you enjoy space-related content and or the game Kerbal Space Program 1 and its sequel KSP2, which I use to visualize both missions in this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. There's more to come in the future. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the meat of the video. Six things that made India's Chandrayaan-3 different from Russia's Luna 25. Number one. Old versus new tech. If you think about Russian rockets, you will probably think of Soyuz. Understandable, since this launch vehicle has been in service in one form or the other since more than half a century. Sure, they updated some stuff over the years, but the overall design hasn't changed since legendary engineer Sergei Korolov came up with the design back when it was still called the R7 Semyorka and originally thought to be a launch vehicle for nuclear bombs. India's launch vehicle Mark III, on the other hand, entered service in 2014. Chandrayaan-3 was its seventh flight. It might use a somewhat Kerbal method of staging, firing the solid rocket boosters first and then, after they are spent, igniting the liquid fuel engine in the center, while already up in the atmosphere. But so far, LVM-3 has a spotless service record with a 100% success rate. Similarly, the spacecraft themselves. Luna 25 was originally named Luna Glob and has been in development hell since the late 1990s. Originally, it should have been launched in 2012, but constant changes in mission parameters and payload design resulted in many delays. The Chandrayaan program, on the other hand, was announced in 2003, but the current vehicle was built between 2019 and 2023. How did the Indian Space Agency ISRO manage to build it so quickly? That leads me to my next item. Number 2. Dealing with failures. Russia as a nation has never managed to get out of the shadow of their precursor. Part of that is the inability to admit mistakes by the current government, which of course controls the space agency Roscosmos. Something we will get back into a later point. Luna 25 was their only shot. No wiggle room for failure. Of course, we all know what happened. It crashed into the surface. India's ISRO, on the other hand, had a very public defeat when the previous incarnation of their moon lander failed as part of the Chandrayaan-2 mission. After the lander crashed on September 6, 2019, India said, Again. They dealt with it, they found out what went wrong, they improved on their designs and processes, and in 2023 they reached their goal because of that. Chandrayaan-3 was the culmination of previous missions and learnings. Russia, on the other hand, had no experience to draw from. The last successful moon landing of the Soviet Union was almost 50 years ago. While we are talking about iterating designs, let's talk about another difference. Number 3. Vehicle design and cost. I'll start with the costs. According to Wikipedia, the Luna 25 program has used up at least the equivalent of 130 million US dollars, while the entire Chandrayaan-3 program, including all three vehicles and launches so far, comes to supposedly the equivalent of 170 million US dollars. I didn't really look a lot deeper into that, but given the difference in output and success rate, that's a staggering cost difference if those numbers are true. 
But let's talk about the vehicle designs. As stated earlier, Luna 25 launched on top of a Soyuz, to be more precise, a Soyuz 21B with a Fregate upper stage. The latter performed a translunar injection burn, after which Luna 25 was all on its own, performing multiple adjustment burns and was planned to land at Boguslavsky Crater in one piece. Well, now it's many pieces. This means that the vehicle had multiple propulsion systems on board, depending on what type of maneuver it was designed to perform. Chandrayaan-3, on the other hand, followed more in the veins of the Apollo program, a sort of bus vehicle that would remain in orbit and a dedicated lander with a specialized landing propulsion system. The benefit of this design is that the lander itself can be purpose-built for its specific task, and the space vehicle can remain in orbit and act as a communication relay and perform science from up there. And ISRO also put a small rover weighing just 26 kilograms on board of the Vikram lander module. This is just my personal opinion, but I believe Luna 25's design added unnecessary complexity to the lander by cramming everything into one vehicle. I want to talk with my hyper-complex multi-planet exploring vehicles in Kerbal Space Program, but that is a video game. In real life, removing complexity and focusing on specific tasks will more than likely win the day rather than going the other route. And win India did. And the next item played a big role in that. Number 4. Political Will Let's face it, any space agency is at the mercy of their respective government. NASA would not have been able to land humans on the moon in the 1960s if the United States government hadn't put a strategic and budgetary emphasis on space. And India's politicians apparently have decided that they want their country to be a space power, not just in name, but in deeds. ISRO is far from done after Chandrayaan-3. Their crew capsule Gaganyaan will be tested next year. They have plans for sending vehicles to the Sun, Venus and Mars. And based on how well India's moon landing was received, it's safe to assume the political and therefore budget support for ISRO will continue. Roscosmos, on the other hand, is stretched thin and bled dry. The previous head of the agency, Dmitry Rogozin, was a loudmouth that even tried to gain political capital by involving Roscosmos at least verbally in the war with Ukraine. This was not well received by the many international partners Russia had been working up until that point. Which is the next difference we need to talk about. Number 5. International Partners India was not completely alone in their success. ISRO was supported by ESA and NASA in their endeavor by helping with tracking and communications. Maybe Chandrayaan-3 would have been successful even without this international assistance, but it surely helped in getting the lander safely down onto the surface. Russia, on the other hand, had nobody to lean on for Luna 25. Due to the unprovoked attack on Ukraine, ESA withdrew from the project. Which might have exacerbated the problem that led to the vehicle's demise, since Europe was to supply a precision camera to assist with landing the thing. Well, space is hard and we should all strive to explore it together as the human race, not just one single nation. More collaboration is always better. So is my next item. Number 6. Transparency. Russia and before it the Soviet Union have always been very secretive about their space program. There was a live stream for the launch of Luna 25, but after that the only information people outside of Russia were able to get were copies of telegram messages and occasional images on Twitter. It appears that Roscosmos was more focused on communicating with the Russian population, in Russian, instead of with the world. India, on the other hand, was comparatively open with their entire Chandrayaan project. Despite the very public setback in 2019, they still decided to livestream the landing of Chandrayaan-3. While it was a resounding success, it still could have failed at any given point, which one of the people responsible also said in a post-landing remark. I know there are thousands of things, any of that could have, can anytime go wrong. So that's my list of six differences between Russia's Luna 25 and India's Chandrayaan-3. Apart from the biggest one, of course, Chandrayaan-3 succeeded and Luna 25 didn't. 
Which of these things made the biggest impact on why one succeeded while the other didn't? Let me know in the comments down below or hop over on my Discord server, link is in the description. Or we can hang out on Patreon if you are inclined to support a small space creator in doing what he loves. Before I go, I want to leave you with a thought that I had this week. While it's great that we can celebrate India's success, I have seen a lot of comments that were celebrating Russia's failure. Most of these sentiments were probably because of the utter disregard for human life that the Russian government has shown by their brutal attack on Ukraine and the ongoing war. Let me be very clear. Everyone responsible for starting this war can go straight to hell from my point of view. There is a reason why I chose to wear yellow and blue in a video shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine. But let me also be clear. I already told you that Luna 25 started life as Luna Glob many years ago. The people that have worked on this spacecraft likely had nothing to do with the invasion. Maybe they are even opposed to it, we don't know. The loss of Luna 25 is a setback for space exploration in general, not just for Russia. It is our loss as well. And we should not mock the people that have spent a big portion of their lives trying to make Luna 25 work. They are scientists and engineers as well, just like those people at ISRO we saw celebrating. Space should unite us, not divide us. And compassion will always go a longer way than antagonizing an entire people just because their leadership has lost the plot. But don't take it from me, take it from the Ukrainians. They treat Russian soldiers they capture better than they were treated by their own military. Never confuse compassion and kindness with weakness. Never other somebody just because they were born between imaginary lines drawn on a map that are different from the lines you were born in between. Never let somebody tell you who to hate. All that aside, Russia's space program is undoubtedly in a bad state right now. And personally, I don't see it getting better as long as there is no significant change in Russian government. But this is something the Russian people have to figure out themselves. And if they do, I hope that they can resuscitate their space program. And we need to be there to assist them. Because, as I said, we can only really succeed together. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.